Hello everyone, today we're going to do some Edinburgh stories with the story of the cannibal of Queensbury House. So some of the comments we've been getting were asking for more Edinburgh stories and uh, folklore and things like that. So I thought we'd start with um, this one. No particular reason. My videos, I make the rules. So the Queensbury House, just in case you don't know where it is, it's right at the bottom of the Royal Mile. And it's actually now integrated into the Scottish Parliament. It's, it's an old building dating back to the 1600s um, that has now, you know, been integrated, I know I'm repeating myself, but it's a good word because that's what's happened. Interlocked, joined, became part of, all the same thing, um, with the Scottish Parliament building now. So it's not a building that you can go into just off the street, but you can see it. Um, so yeah, so I thought there's, there's a little bit of a cool story with it. Gruesome story, but still a cool story. So I thought we'd tell that. You might hear tippy tapping about the place. The dogs are, are wandering about. Queensbury House was built in 1667 and it had a couple of owners, I'm not going to go into the who built it and then who bought it and then who ended, you know, the, but it was eventually bought by the Duke of Queensbury. He eventually died, as we all do, uh, but he died in quite unfortunate circumstances. His apron caught fire. And he died of the burns and you know this is the 1600s burns are a very well burns are a very serious thing now but you could die of a scratch back then you know cut your finger and that could be it um so there was he died of these wounds and then his son the second duke of queensbury took over now he plays a funny role in Scottish history and I can guarantee probably most people in Scotland have never even heard of him. And the reason that he played such a big part is because in 1707 he was almost, well not solely responsible, but really majorly responsible for the Act of Union. Now the Act of Union is what joins Scotland to England, that's what made it one united kingdom the act of union was a massive massive thing and even now you know it's by a lot of people in scotland is really not looked upon as a good thing it was massively important history wise but some people loved it some people hated it anyway um he was living in queensbury house at the time when he did this so it's kind of a funny full circle anyway that the act of union that abolished the scottish parliament at the time to then join it to the English Parliament to become the British Parliament, which is now which is based in London. All of this, all of these conversations and how it all happened, took place in Queensbury House, which is now ironically part of the Scottish Parliament. Full circle. Anyway, that that's by and by and just a, a nice little side point. The um, the thing is about him is he had a son. He had a son who was quite mentally ill. And again, we're going back to 1700, 1707, uh, or well, 1700s roundabout. Was, he was a, there was a really serious thing, as it is now, but they didn't treat it well. He was locked in a room. That was it. That's how they treated it. They locked him away in a room. Anyway, on the evening of 1707, the Duke of Queensbury went out with his family and they went away partying somewhere because like I said, half of Scotland, maybe not even half of Scotland was uh, really happy about the Act of Union and the other half were outraged. So half of Scotland were partying and half of Scotland were rioting because they didn't want this to happen. Because the, the crowns had already joined up. The crowns in Scotland had, from the English crown and the Scottish crown had already joined up earlier when King James, who was Mary Queen of Scots' son and was already the King of Scotland, became got both crowns and joined the crowns. Uh, that was him. That was him. He he did that. Um, Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Stop distracting me. I'm going off on a wandering now. Anyway, um, yeah, so he had a son. So he and his family without the son went out to party now i don't know where they went out to party or to get out of edinburgh to get away from the riots or the fact that people were unhappy about the act of union i don't know you'd have to ask the people back then um servants and everything went out with them as well but most importantly the gentleman whose job it was to look after his son went out 
Now the son was apparently a big guy, a big guy. Um, his name, his name was James, and he was apparently, you know, quite a. I don't want to say beast of a man, but it was for for then he would be a big guy. Locked in a room, boarded up windows in the dark most of the time as well. Apparently, anyway, when they all went out, he managed to get out of his room. So he's now running about inside Queensbury House. So James is now loose and running about the house. He's angry, obviously, and he's hungry. He's really hungry. So eventually he's running about and he gets a whiff of the kitchen. And he goes down to the kitchen to find what they eat. And unfortunately, there was a young kitchen boy there. Now, the kitchen boy was very quickly overpowered. And I'm not going to go into the full story. But um, unfortunately he ended up cooking and eating the kitchen boy. Eventually, obviously, they noticed that he was missing from his room. They started to search all over the house and they found him um, on a spit. They found the boy part devoured roasting on a spit over the fire. Now, the Duke tried to get this story covered up. He really tried to hide it away. Um, but unfortunately the story did get out to the people of Scotland. Now remember, the people of Scotland were already kind of angry with him anyway for this whole act of union thing, so now this was massive. The, his son, who was an Earl, uh, James, was sent off down to England um, and was never really heard or seen of again. This did, however, still cause a problem for the Duke because upon his death, James would become the third Duke. So he was like, and with a little bit more political influence, they managed to change the rules so it went to his second son, Charles, instead of going to the first son. But by then, he was already called the Cannibal Earl, uh, James was, and that's how he was known around Scotland, even though he was off there in England. And then they said that there was a curse on the family name, and unfortunately Charles, his wife, this is the son, now, uh, the second son who became the Duke, his wife also apparently was afflicted with some sort of mental illness, I, I couldn't quite figure out what, and she apparently hated the Scots. Now, I think they'd moved, they, they must have obviously had a lot of ties with England now, because obviously the Act of Unions happened, a lot of business is happening with London and Edinburgh now, or at least a bit more. Um, so I'm guessing his wife was English? I don't know. I think, but she hated the Scots, absolutely hated the Scots. So when she was at Queensbury House, whenever they would have Scottish guests, other dukes and earls and whatnot, um, she would deliberately dress as a Scottish peasant woman and mock them whenever she came in. Like, you know, going, oh look, I'm dressed like you, all these sort of things. So I don't know, something like that. It's the 1700s, I wasn't there, I don't know what she said, don't ask me. Um, but yeah, so she used to do that. And then apparently their son was also afflicted with some sort of mental issues. I don't know if it was all maybe the upbringing that they all had or if it was... But um, there was obviously something genetic going on there. But he, down in London, I can't remember exactly why, I don't know why to tell you the truth, but he picked up his mum, carried her in front of a carriage on the road in London and shot himself in the head. So there we go. Eventually Queensbury House was sold. I think uh, the Duke of Queensbury, I think that title was eventually abolished to tell you the truth. Um, and the house was sold and after it was this, you know, Duke's house, it became a couple of things. It was an army barracks for a little while, it was a hospital for a little while, eventually becoming part of the Scottish Parliament. Now, in fact there was would be part of the brewery there as well because the Scottish Parliament, uh, the site that it's on used to be part of a brewery. So it's when Duke's House, Army Barracks, Hospital, Brewery, Scottish Parliament. It's quite the life of a building really, but there you have it guys. That's the story of the Cannibal Duke of Edinburgh. You don't hear that story very often. Um, it's not one of the really well-known ones. Again, I'm not an expert. Okay, I'm not an expert, this is just little bits that I've looked up. Um, there might be little bits of that story that's wrong, but that's the way I know it. Um, if anyone knows it differently, please comment below and correct me. But I think that's it. 
Guys, I hope you all had a good new year now that we're into, you know, 2019, we'll see what happens. I'll do more of these. Uh, lots of people were saying they wanted more little stories. Sometimes I'll be out in town, sometimes I might just sit in the house. Depends on the weather and how my work is for that day. Remember to give it a like and leave a comment and subscribe if you haven't already. We hit 2,000 subscribers. I, I don't know what to say about that. We're actually over 2,000 now. Um, you guys are amazing. Hello. Hello everyone that, that, that's joined us and joined Clan Brunford. It's nice to meet you all. I hope you leave a comment. Let me know where you are in the world and what you're doing and if the videos have helped you come to Scotland and no stories or, or if you're in Scotland and you just, you know, for some reason like listen, listening to me talk. I think that's it guys. You lot are incredible and till next time. Bye humans.